Hey guys, this is Reggie from Gunpla Network, and today I'm bringing you my unboxing of the Figurize Standard Amplified Bealzamon from Digimon Tamers. Now, Bealzamon, also his rookie form, It Mom, is definitely an interesting character from the Digimon Tamers series. So, Digimon Tamers as a whole was kind of like a reimagining of the Digimon series at that point because we had the first two seasons, Digimon Adventure and Zero Two in Japan, where it kind of had already a continuity. It was connected with each other. The digital world was looked at as a magical place where children's dreams can come true and meet friends, digital monsters, essentially. Season 3, or Tamers in Japan, decided to take a more grounded and more realistic approach to where Digimon or Data Digimon are, are still, a lot of the concepts are still there where a Digimon will bond with their Tamer to gain better power and friendship, but also the digital world is much more feral than what was portrayed in the first two seasons, and it definitely took a more grounded approach to its character development and how they relate to each other. Itma, Itmon would, was a character that had a tamer, two tamers, little kids that often would treat him like a toy rather than a friend and he felt resentful towards humans because of the way he was treated but also the fact that because of the way he couldn't connect with his trainers at the time, could not digivolve like the main three characters. So he often tried to he was essentially, the first half of the series, he was more of a comic relief character. But then once he went to the digital world and he was trying to prove himself to show that he could be as powerful, he got curb stomped brutally and decided to betray the Digidestin by teaming up with the Sovereign in order to gain more power. And he got to pretty much skip every single form and go fucking mega <laughs> to Beelzebub. Beelzebub showed up with his cool bike and he was a catalyst for the shift well okay to be fair Digimon Tamers was a darker series compared to the first two seasons and the first two seasons for anime is still kind of dark for 90s early 2000s TV but that was the shift when he became Beelzebub he killed Leomon caused Jerry to have her PTSD arc caused Takato and Guillemon to go through their uh, Skull Greymon episode before they were able to come back together to become Gallimon, and that was like the major shift. And also, he does get redemption later on when he realizes that he was missing the connection of his tamers and also being able to connect with them, them growing up and seeing him as more than just a toy, they see him as a friend, and he becomes Beelzebub Blasmo with the dark angel wings and the big gun, which I hope we get as a P Bandai one day. So character-wise, Beelzebub is definitely a strong character within the anime, and it's cool to finally see him get a amplified version of a model kit in the this new-ish Digimon model kit series that we've been getting. I'd say the Amplified, as I said before in my Greymon video, I feel like the Amplified kits are a little bit better than the standard ones. Again, I reviewed the standard Greymon, and it was a good kit, but I felt like the Amplified Greymon just had that little bit extra, it had more versatility with his accessories. So, Beelzebub, what is he known for? His gun and his bike. We don't get the bike, but he has a really cool aesthetic, so we're gonna open up the box and see what we have here. All right, we're going through all the runners. We are at the A runner and we're gonna get our multicolored layer. We're gonna get a matte black for a lot of his armor. We're gonna get a pale white and his hair while on camera, it might look white. It's actually a very light yellow, almost a beige because he has like that long hair look behind his helmet. So that's kind of the aesthetic that they're going for here. So you're definitely getting a lot of different textures as well. On the B runner, you're gonna get two of these and they're a mixture of like, it's kind of like that injected silver. It's not the best silver in the world, but it is a step up compared to it being a dull gray and that's gonna be used for his claws, his accents, his gun, and a lot of the biker aesthetic that he's used in his character. So you're gonna get two of those runners and I'd say they have a good look to them. Again, it's not chrome, 
but I think it's still enough of a step up from gray to where it's gonna be able to stand out. So we're at the E2 runner, and these are kind of like a copper gold. It's, I wouldn't say pukey gold, like Strike Freedom Gundam. But again, like I said, with the silver, it is a step up. And that's gonna be used again for a lot of the circular areas on his boots, the gun, and a little bit on his shoulder pads, I wanna believe. It's a nice color. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to be a little bit more mindful when I try to clip these off so I don't damage them or ruin the color that's already inside of the plastic. Next up, we have the joints here on the C1 and the C2 runner. These are gonna make up the joints within the arms, the legs, I can see a couple of knee pads and a little bit of molded piping on his back. It's kind of like a muted gray, a dark gray, which is, has a good look to it. And it's definitely gonna make up the joints. I would hope that the design is to make them a little sturdy because he is a tall guy. So I'm gonna say that these joints should be able to hold them up pretty well. We're getting the D-Runner, which is, again, is gonna make up the joints. I see a lot of arm parts and I see parts of his feet. This is definitely a little bit of a slightly glossier black compared to the matte black on the A-Runner. Still has a nice look, it has a nice sheen to it. It's not too glossy, though. It just kind of balances itself out from the matte, but still, is not too over the top glossy. Gonna get the E1 runner, which is gonna make up the collar of his jacket. And it's a, it's just a chalk white. It's so white and pale and also has a matte finish in itself. And it has some texture to it. So it's not just like a straight collar. It's trying to imitate fur decently enough. And I think it has but the chalk white was definitely a good choice. Again, we're getting another D-Runner, which is a lot of the same joints that we saw before, but I also see parts of his torso and his back. And I can see with his back, he definitely has some pegs in there. So it kind of makes me wonder, is there gonna be some accessories that are compatible with him for other Digimon kits? I wonder. gonna get the F1 runner now and it's definitely it's not copper it's it's a straight brown it's a nice brownie brown and it's definitely I could see that I think it's gonna be used for some accents on his ankles I think only four parts of it but hey it's just it's a brownie brown it's a nice coffee brown with a matte finish to it this is something that I like here. So we have the E2 runner and it's just one runner. It's just the bandana on his arm. And I really like that because they could have just made that a sticker, but they decided to put the effort into mold, just to mold his bandana on his arm. That's a really cool amount of detail that this kit is gonna go into. I really appreciate that from Bandai. Next up, we're gonna get the sticker sheet and I, I'm liking what I'm seeing, very minimal. It's not as crazy as the previous kits that I've done. It's just the eyes, a little accent color and the skull on his arm. So I love the minimal use of stickers. These would be very difficult to paint. So I'm happy to see that we don't have to paint that. And I'm also happy to see that as these kits go on, they're able to put in more detail and we can rely less on stickers because the stickers for the War Greymon was atrocious for the Brave Shield. That should have been a molded in part, in my opinion. Finally, here we have the Bialzamon instruction manual with him with the same posing as he has on the box art. On the back, you're gonna get some ideas on how to pose him, what can you do, what's he gonna look like out of the box, and also just on the bottom, you're always gonna get your painting guy if you want to paint him up and it's gonna give you both in Japanese and English, the instructions and what kind of mix to use if you wanna get the most accurate colors that you want for 
Beelzebub. So that's always appreciative, especially in the last few years where they switched out and decided to put multi-language with Japanese and English. So overall, that is my unboxing of Beelzebub. I'm really stoked. I'm really excited to see what we have. I love the little attention to detail, the fact that the chalk white, the collar, they try to imitate fur. The bandana, which could have been a sticker or just like they could have molded it into the arm instead. It's its own separate piece. I really appreciate that. And it's just seeing that even though, you know, these kits have been around for a little bit, Bandai isn't just relying on their loyals to keep the mind going. They're trying to improve. They're trying to add more detail. They're trying to keep it pushing because these are technically high grade level kits, but they are adding more detail because even the more modern high grade Gundam kits were almost outside of stickers for the eyes and the cameras. We're almost fully away from stickers at this point with certain exceptions, of course, but I'm happy to see that that attention to detail that we usually are seeing now with high grade Gundam kits, we're seeing now with the Digimon kits as well. They're not just deciding to, we found a quality, let's just stick to it. No, Bandai is trying to push that quality a little better for its price tag. So that's my unboxing. I will come with you guys with the full product as soon as I can and really appreciate it. Again, I forgot to say this. Thank you very much for Canadian Gundam for providing me with this kit. If you want something like this or more, go check out their website. They have a flat rate $10 shipping fee all throughout North America. A great list of kits, both new, current, and a bit obscure. If you're looking for that one weird rando kit that you want in your collection, go check them out. Say that Gunpla Network sent you. And I'll see you guys later.